from the latest on Caribbean cruises to kosher safaris, pilgrimages to Jewish Eastern Europe and award-winning wines and international cuisine in sun-drenched Tel Aviv. Sit back and enjoy the trip with the travel edition of the Jerusalem Post podcast. Morning, David. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, listener. Seems like ages since we were in Batumi. <laughs> this is one of our fun bits where we have to think, well, we're doing two podcasts about one particular region. How do we connect the two of them with making it sound like we went away and then came back a few weeks later? We're now in Ajara. In fact, when we were in Batumi, we were in Ajara. But Batumi is the main city of Ajara. And we've decided we're going to go a little bit further out of the city and see the region. Ajara is the region at the southwestern side of Georgia. I guess Georgia is a, a left to right country as opposed to an up to down country or east to west. Are you doing politics now? <laughs> Heaven forbid. Talking geography. We're on the eastern side of the Black Sea. Turkey is below us and Russia's about 200 miles above us. Whereas our Batumi podcast was city-based museums, restaurants, walks, cable cars, boats, we're mm-hmm. now going to commune with nature. Um, oh, dearie me. Well, hopefully we're going to be bringing to life or making bloom audio fashion nature, waterfalls, well, I guess waterfalls are part of nature, and maybe a fortress or two. Listen out for all of that coming up. But I think before we actually head out, we're on the road now leaving Batumi towards our first destination. That gives Mark the opportunity to come up with something fiendishly difficult for you to answer. Ajara is known for its natural resources, its village life. One of the things it's famous for is apiculture. What is apiculture? The answer at the end of the pod. Discover the future with Inside Israeli Innovation. I'm Eve Young from the Jerusalem Post, bringing you exclusive insights from Israel's top innovators. Each week, we dive into the latest trends in tech, business, and beyond with interviews from the brightest minds in the industry. Whether it's cutting-edge startups or revolutionary tech breakthroughs, Inside Israeli Innovation is your front row seat to the startup nation. Subscribe now on your favorite podcast platform and stay ahead of the curve. Inside Israeli Innovation, where innovation meets inspiration. Welcome back to the Jerusalem Post podcast travel edition brought to you from Georgia, not the state, but the country. We are at Gonio Fortress, which is just outside Batumi. Do you remember Batumi, David? You'll have to bring it Batumi. Crumbs. (laughs) It was a good seven minutes drive from Batumi, past the casino and the upside down McDonald's, to this wonderful ancient fortress. If you listened to our last episode from Batumi, you'll know that we rode on a cable car. And the cable car line has a name, which is Argo. Why? Ergo. It was called that. I don't know if people remember the. 1960 something Ray Harryhausen film, not Harry Harryhausen, but Ray Harryhausen film, Jason and the Argonauts. Why would you reference Ray Harryhausen when you could be talking about original classic Greek mythology? Oh, is it an old story? I thought all of this was built after 1967. <laughs> this is the set which tells the mythological story of Jason and the Argonauts. Jason came here and stole the golden fleets of Cretaceous. Hang on a sec, if it was myth, he didn't really come here. Jason allegedly came here. Okay. If you believe the stories. So Jason went to Cretaceous, which is in the middle of Georgia, slightly east of here, stole the golden fleece, came running back to where we are now, Batumi. He then got on a ship, sailed away with the fleece, and Apsaurus followed him. I don't know who Apsaurus was. I think he was related to Media, whose statue we saw yesterday in Batumi. Multi-Media, if there were lots of them. And there was just one. Okay, and what's this got to do with abscesses? Absus, after he jumped on the ship chasing after them, was slaughtered, thrown into the Black Sea. Luckily, he didn't drop below 200 metres, otherwise he would have just still been there. Floated back on shore, and they decided to bury him here and build a little statue outside and call this Apsaurus's Fort. But it's also Gonio Fort. Absolutely fascinating, and I bet you all thought Mark was just comedy. He does Wikipedia too. 
No, I listened to the guide for two minutes while I was on Wikipedia. More later. This is Mark Gordon from the Jerusalem Post podcast travel edition. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at MarkDavidPod or mail us at MarkDavidPod at gmail.com. Really not far out of Batumi, just to the north along the coast, is a peaceful paradise, an oasis, a place where you can commune with nature, where you can learn, where you can breathe, where you can feel spiritually at ease with yourself and with Mother Nature and with our tour guide, Salome Gorgiladze, who you may remember from our last episode down the road in Batumi. Salome, where are we? We are at Batumi Botanical Gardens. Actually, it is called Batumi Botanical Gardens, but it is outside of Batumi. It is between two villages, Chakvi and Green Cape, and it is one of the most beautiful places in the country. Tell us some of the history of the gardens. To tell the history of the garden, we have to mention several people who established the garden. Before they started establishing the garden, uh, these territories were covered with local forest. Later, in 1880s, uh, Michel d'Alphonse, French gardener, who also took part in planning and establishing Batumi Boulevard, bought a plot of land here near the seaside and started introducing some exotic plants to the region. Later, he was followed by botanist Andrei Krasno, who was the professor of Kharkov University. So he also bought the plot of land and he started planning garden there. Later, these two private gardens were incorporated into the botanical gardens and officially it was opened in 1912. So the garden is more than 100 years old. Talk to us about some of the species of plant and tree that you can find in this garden. You can, of course, find here some uh, local plants as peach trees, box trees from this region, some cedar trees too, and also hornbeams etc etc you can also find some pine trees from different regions like india north america mediterranean local ones from caucasus caucasian fir trees maple trees we're surrounded by maples as you can see in eastern european sections a lot of different species of magnolias which are by the way considered one of the earliest plants on earth as for some exotic plants, maybe Araucaria trees, uh, we have Citrus Selectionary Garden. We're actually stopping as one of our friends who's here from Israel is handing out ice creams. <laughs> for everyone. So just take some For ice everyone, cream. you are very generous. We have a lot of eucalyptus trees in the garden. Uh, we have shy mimosha, which uh, closes down when you touch it and opens again after a while. Is there something unique here that you won't see anywhere else in Georgia or even the world? Its uniqueness is in its diversity because you cannot find other place, not only in Georgia, but in the world where you can find 5,000 different species of plants. We're now going to take a pause with the conversation with you because we're getting on the vehicle that is going to take us up to the higher parts of the uh, hillside. Hello, David. Lovely view. It most certainly is, Mark. We're going to the end of our initial day out here in the countryside, but we've not actually been that far away from Batumi at all. No, in fact, I can see Batumi just in the distance there. We've just come downhill a little bit from the Botanical Garden, which was absolutely wonderful, and we've come to the Petra Fortress, which does not mean we're in Jordan. No, we are still in Georgia, funnily enough, and about seven or eight miles outside of Batumi, we have the wonderful panoramic view of the Black Sea up here, Petra Fortress is a fort built around 6 BC, we think. The period, apparently, when Justinian was the emperor over in Rome. Someone called Justin, anyway, was, was what I heard. <laughs> oh, just in time, Mark. Justin Bieber. He, <laughs> he sang about peaches in Georgia, but I think it was the other Georgia. Oh, very good. It lived life as a fort, and then around a thousand years ago, it was taken over by more local people. A basilica, I believe, was built here, and it was used as a fort all the way up till the early part of the 20th century. The Russo Turkish Wars, I believe. There are still signs, obviously, it's a fort. There are a few walls remaining, but not complete walls. There are slits within the walls that you can see through. There are some cannons here, although they could well be decorative. 
And there's a tunnel, which at one point was an arsenal. It's a beautiful place. It's really close by. If you happen to get to Batumi, it is well worth coming out here. We haven't talked much so far about transport. We're lucky that we're in an organised bus, but I'm assuming the best way to see this whole region is going to be hiring a car. I believe taxis are inexpensive. To the Botanical Gardens from Batumi, I'm told it's around 20 lari, which is around, doing my sums now, 7 $8 with a family that's not too bad it's very affordable the thing is once you get out into the mountains and so on i don't know how much there's going to be public transport and obviously the big problem with taxis is you order a taxi from batumi it takes you out to the middle of nowhere to a stunning waterfall how do you get back you get your app and you go on bolt which i think is the main taxi app here and they'll come pick you up you can use the buses and i believe they cost about one larry which is maybe 30 cents I think that's for the more adventurous, though. I'm not sure how much is written in English. I would definitely say if you're planning on heading out beyond Batumi, you're going to want to rent a car. To talk the latest news in Israel, the Jewish world, and everything in between. This is the J-Post Podcast. I'm Tamar Uriel Beery, Managing Editor of JPost.com. And I'm Tzvika Klein, Editor-in-Chief of the Jerusalem Post. And I'm Sara Benun, Night Editor at the Jerusalem Post. Join us as we bring some of the most impactful voices to bring you into what it means to be Jewish, to be Israeli today. Every week, we bring you with us into the newsroom in every sense. Stop being so dramatic. This is just our coffee break. You can find us every Thursday on jpost.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you there. Yalla, bye. We've come out for a celebratory dinner with all the team from Visit Batumi. And now our host has something very special for us. Absolutely incredible. So we're sitting with a group of Israeli journalists in a restaurant around the corner from our hotel. We just sat down. We just drank a toast to peace wherever people live. The hors d'oeuvres have been served in Metze style. And suddenly, Sulchan and two of his friends belted out that song. Michael, what was the song about? What is it about? Maybe you will surprise, but there is only just one word. Mraval Jamir. In translation... It means long live. It is designated to glorify the God. This song comes for choir songs from the church. 
Batumi in Ajara fact file. The main airport is the Alexander Kathveli Batumi International Airport. From Tel Aviv to Batumi, there are seasonal direct flights operated by Israel, El Al and Arkia. For international connections, there are direct flights from Istanbul with Turkish and from Dubai with Fly Dubai. Travel from the airport to the city centre takes around 15 minutes by car. There are shuttle buses from the airport to downtown Batumi taking about 20 minutes and costing around 40 agarot or 10 cents. Taxis are available at the exit to the terminal. Batumi has global hotel chains like Best Western, Hilton, Radisson, Le Meridian, Sheraton, Courtyard by Marriott and Wyndham. The King Solomon is a luxury kosher hotel near the beach, including family rooms. One US dollar will buy you 2.67 Georgian Larry as of April 2024. In the Ajara region, the climate is subtropical. Maximum temperatures vary between 7 Celsius, 44 Fahrenheit in January, and 31 Celsius or 88 Fahrenheit in July and August. Batumi cuisine is full of different types of meat, vegetables, spices and fruits, and products made from flour are widely used in national cuisine. Speciality dishes include khachapuri, breads with cheese and egg, khinkali, dumplings, ajika, hot and spicy paste, and chikhirtma, or chicken soup. The King Solomon has a kosher dairy restaurant called Kohelet and a meat restaurant called Kino David. There's also a kosher restaurant at the Euphoria Hotel and Mendi restaurant at Chabad House. We have left the coast and the city of Batumi behind and we've headed into the mountains. At the moment, I'd say we're in the hills. This is the Lesser Caucasus, the Lower Caucasus. Uh, we are in the Lesser Caucasus, uh, so as we are in the southern part of the country right now, in beautiful village of Mirveti. I am absolutely in love with this place. We live in Israel and there are many beautiful parts of Israel, but it's very much seasonally affected. So the green is just usually in the spring, then it starts to get browner and greyer. And the water is not in plentiful supply. And yet here we are next to a wonderful waterfall and yet i understand there are much bigger ones too of course this is not the biggest waterfall in the vicinity but one of the most impressive as for green areas uh, ajara this region is green all year round and it is the greenest area in our country a mere two thousand two and a half thousand steps from the parking space where we park the bus this is a very comfortable easy walk two two and a half thousand steps you mean on the flat not climbing two and a half thousand yeah mainly flat there was right. a tiny little rise at the end mm -hmm. but nothing that most people can't handle to get you to this really impressive part of nature along the way there's like a small village almost like cottage industries each house has a restaurant a toilet for one larry i also noticed that i went and filmed and if you go to our social media at mark david pod you will see this a working well is that just for the tourists or the locals actually draw their water from a well here? For a lot of village dwellers, it is still common to have uh, water not in taps, but in the yard, in the wells. And sometimes when uh, they have running water, they still keep these old wells to have fresh and very cold, tasty water. On the way, I also saw a sign which said 685 hectares for sale. How easy is it to buy a little plot of land here and build yourself an idyllic countryside house. Georgia has very liberate laws towards uh, foreigners. The land shouldn't be for agriculture and you can buy it and build your beautiful cottage and live in paradise. Mark talks about the accessibility once you get to a place like this, but generally the places we're visiting today, somebody who's coming from Batumi, how do they get to places like this? Is there public transport? Of course there is a public transport which comes here every hour, but it's not very convenient, comfortable. It's better to rent a cab or marshutka or bus like we have today. What is a marshutka? Marshutka is kind of sprinter. We use it as a public transport here in Georgia. They have their numbers and apart from buses, we have them as public transport. They cost a bit more expensive than buses, but they can stop at any place you would like. 
And bus is stop only at the bus stops. Do you need climbing boots, winter clothes, waterproof clothes? Can you go swimming in the waterfall? Here water is not uh, that high to swim, but there are some waterfalls where you can swim. No climbing boots for this place because it's mostly flat. Where else have you got lined up for us for the rest of the day? Because we're not going to record everywhere, but just to give our listeners a taste of what else is on the menu. So today we are going to visit a Mahunsati waterfall, which is also in the area. It is much bigger. This one is just 18 meters high and that one is 50 meters high. So it is bigger and there you can even swim. The other waterfall is close to the river. So a lot of people uh, swim into the river and sometimes they jump from the bridge directly into the river. And just to give listeners who are not in metric an idea, 50 meters, is about 170 feet, 180 feet. You're listening to the Jerusalem Post podcast, Travel Edition. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at MarkDavidPod or mail us at MarkDavidPod at gmail.com. We've left those stunning waterfalls behind us. We're now out of the sun in fact it's actually rather chilly because we're below ground i kind of feel like we've gone back in time i can see a turntable from the 50s or 60s an accordion i don't even know what that is over there it looks like an old gramophone we're in the wine cellar of the ajaran wine house a wine tasting house and restaurant deep in the ajaran region that showcases the georgian tradition of making wine So I think the reason that we're seeing those types of instruments here is maybe because they actually have traditional evenings playing the type of music that would have been played maybe some years ago. But also, as you go around the cellar, it's not just about wine, but also about the history of this region. So there are costumes, there are old wine bottles through the ages, including some in Russian. There are different barrels showing the ways that wine were kept through the ages. The winemaking tradition here goes back as far as 6,000 years when wine was made in clay jugs underground. Batumi is what they call a Porto Franco, a free port, and wine became one of the major industries here. And this is a typical production facility from maybe 60, 70 years ago. And on top of it, they've built a lovely restaurant with windows where you can look down into the facility. Shall we let a tour guide tell us the rest? Yes. It'll be a different tour guide. We have found a tour guide, and after a little bit of persuasion, she's happy to talk to us in English, and her name is Lana. Can you tell us a little bit about this wine house? Hello. Uh, About our winery, it's very traditional. Here we have 40 different kinds of uh, alcohol, from which uh, 23 kinds of wine. And from it, we have our special and most famous wine here, which name is Chaveri, which is a rose wine, which is, we can say, that one of the main reasons why today this building uh, exists and working as a winery, because it's very special, but also very specific grape sort, just grows up in this region. So they wanted to survive this really special grape. So it's very you know, dearest wine from us and you should taste it by the way here we also producing uh, chacha which is a very famous <laughs> drink in Georgia and in our restaurant we have two type of chacha here uh, original white chacha and also uh, chacha rosé which is a uh, mix with the wine with our special wine which is uh, like 30 percent uh, and then saved in the barrels for about uh, two years also, we here have uh, three kind of cognacs, like a brandy, Georgian brandies, a classic, a sopi, and uh, Ixo, which is also very popular here for our foreign guests. What's going on in this room? We're surrounded by metal tanks, and there's a man pumping air into the tanks. What is this room? This is uh, like a showroom for our tourists mostly. It looks like a factory for some people, but it's not. In general, we haven't factory here in this place because it's not enough place for it. We have a big factory in the other near village, which name is Keda. There we produce in all of our wines and jaja, and also we have honey, we produce in our natural honey. And this is just like what the guests, like modern wine savers, barrels, and so on. <laughs> Lana, thank you very much indeed. And now we're looking forward to tasting. You think that the cha-cha is the best thing to taste? Or? Uh, for me, as a Georgian, it's a very good choice. 
<laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm surrounded by octopuses, mushrooms, stingrays, jellyfish, and I'm about to hit my balls into a snail. Just the experience of watching two robot arms making your cocktail for you. I've got this strapping thing on and a very small piece of metal that is going to hold my body on a rope. And we were fighting as snow shifters against yetis. So we're both in very nice floral dresses. You're listening to the Jerusalem Post podcast travel edition with Mark Gordon and David Harris. It's wine tasting time, David. We've been waiting three and a half days for this. I tell you what, I've had so much Georgian wine over the last two or three days, but it wasn't really tasting. It was more chugging. (laughs) What a great word. We're in a gorgeous area. We're surrounded by hills on both sides. We're down in the vineyard itself there's a large barrel with a glass round table above it and numerous glasses of wine that have been poured it's a a jar and chaveri it's quite rare it's only made in three regions one of those regions is abkhazia which the georgians don't really have access to which makes it even rarer this is a rosé it's semi-sweet and it's one of the signature wines of the ajaran wine house shall we have a quick tipple is it orange or is it to rosé? It says rosé on the bottle. It's not like a classical light rosé. It's much darker. Definitely has a sweet scent. Yes, it's not a traditional rosé. I think you're definitely getting the regional flavour, but also the fact that it's semi-sweet gives it a more sugary smell. Okay, who's making the sniffing noise this time for the audio? <laughs> that was a Mark sniff. Here comes a David sniff. <laughs> oh, stop it, Mark. Just sweet, just sweet. Let's try. Kiddush. Actually, it's not as sweet as a Kiddush wine. Kiddush wine is what Jewish people have on a Friday night, which is normally rather syrupy. This is semi-sweet. Kiddush wine is sweet, sweet. Yeah, I think you've got definitely got a semi there and not a sweet. Sweet, sweet. The memories you gave to me. Is that in Georgian? You can't beat the memories you gave to me. Memories are made of this. One sniff of the wine and he's off singing. We'll catch you in about two hours when we pick David off the floor and when I've actually learnt the real lyrics to the song oh Mark oh David it's been a trip and a half well one trip to be precise we are at the end of our trip to the Adjara region it has been a blast it's been amazing The countryside is absolutely beautiful, whether it's the more curated beauty of the botanical gardens or more of the wild nature that we've seen today as we've headed into the hills, the waterfalls and so on. Combined with a feel for the Ajaran culture, the music, the dance and the wine houses and the food, we've really, really managed to take them all in and enjoy ourselves. As always at this point in the podcast, we have a few thank yous to say. So first of all, thank you to Visit Batumi, to Mikhail and to Rusudan from that organization. And of course, to Salome, who you've heard throughout the podcast and indeed in our previous podcast, which we brought to you from the city of Batumi. If you've enjoyed this podcast, listen to our other podcasts from Batumi and our collection of at least 80 other podcasts from around the world. If you really liked it, Give us a five-star rating and share it with your friends. At Mark David Pod is social media, and you can always mail us markdavidpod at gmail.com. Mark, you posed a quiz question a couple of days ago, or about half an hour, 45 minutes ago, for our listeners. Yes, the question was, what is apiculture, David? Is there a word that bounces off it like epilepsy or something? No, but apparently you can have an apiary, which is where you keep bees, a beehive. So we're talking maybe honey. Yes, making honey. And particularly for this region of Ajara, you can have Ajara honey. He's been working on that punchline for, well, basically for two days. We are going to sign off in the way that Mark and I like to sign off better than in any other podcast. We have in front of us 41% booze. It's called cha-cha. And trust me, we'll be dancing after we drink this. Ladies and gentlemen, cha cha cha. Cha cha cha. Mark Lachaim. Lachaim. In one. Yeah, right. Goodbye. Take care, <laughs> folks. <laughs> <laughs>